Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys another variation on wrapping dragon eyes. So this is another 40 by 30 millimeter um, dragon eye but you can use it on really any sized um, flat backed undrilled gemstone or bead or glass cab or just whatever you have like the possibilities are endless so let's get started. <laughs> What we're working with today is a 40 by 30 millimeter cop glass cabochon that's been, fortunately very durable that's been painted up to look like a dragon's eye. I also have about 14 inches of a pretty stiff 16 gauge aluminum. And then I'm also working with um, flat aluminum wire. Um, there's links for all of the tools and materials that will be used in this tutorial down in the uh, video description for you know your shopping leisure and um, the way that we're going to be starting is I'm actually going to come to the very center of this length of wire and I'm going to bend this part this way and this part this way so that it's kind of doing this number And I'm just kind of kind of kind come 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 Um, I'm just gonna keep building this shape around, and I want to leave a little bit of space in between the wires as we go. Okay. So now. We're coming off this way and we're coming off this way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it with my bent nose pliers and bend at a 90 degree. And then trying my best to be in line with that bend. I'm going to curve this one a little bit more. That way I'll get a sharper bend. Just like that. And now I have a little anvil. And I'm going to be using the brass head of my little mini Mjolnir here. Um, and it's about to get loud real quick, but I'm going to hammer this as pretty flat and stiff as I can get. Well, that solidified my headache for sure. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to set those off to the side. I'm going to kind of straighten this out a little bit more. And now what I'm going to be doing is I am going to glue this with a two-part five-minute epoxy onto the back of this cabochon. So let me find that real quick. So I use Devcon 5 Minute Epoxy in clear. Um, again, there'll be links down in the video description of where you can get it. And this is a brand new bottle, so I'm actually just going to break into it. I like peeling the label off because I can see what's happening inside the bottle a little better. These air bubbles, I'm going to sit it up on its end so that they kind of work their way out of it. But um, you could also do this with Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. It doesn't hold as firmly and it takes like you have to wait like 24 hours. Whereas this one, in five minutes, we're ready to go. Which that is hard to beat. I also have a long toothpick and a sheet of scrap paper to mix on. It has this little mixing thing there in between the um, the ends, the handle that you can kind of pull out, but I never feel like that's long enough, and I also kind of feel like it's mostly there to keep it from uh, pushing on the tip. Also, speaking of the tip, I'm going to come in and just snip 
I am by an open window, so while this stuff doesn't smell very strongly, it's still a good idea. And I'm just going to extrude out whoop, about this much. Actually, that's quite generous. Um, hmm. So I might need to do a couple of eyes like this. I'm just setting that off to the side where hopefully it won't leak and make a giant mess everywhere. And from this moment of starting to mix, I have five minutes. It really, it's more like a solid like three and a half um, of it being like workable. So I'm going to stir it as much as I can, making sure it's as well incorporated. And I'm going to try to pull off another section of wire um, to do another eye real quick. Go, go, Power Rangers. I don't know why I always think of that song whenever I want to go fast. Gotta go fast. Blush. Go down. Masters of the Universe. Dun, dun. And the space that I'm giving us in between the wire sections um, will really help give it, I don't know, I feel like more surface area connection, if that makes sense. So bending that off. And good gravy. Um, fireworks, guys. It's coming up on the 4th of July at the time of recording. Um, hopefully... That's all that is. Yeah. It's still a little bit runny, so I'm perfectly okay with taking a little bit longer. Hammering this out nice and flat. And I'm going to pick out another eye. Eep. Here we have a really nice fiery looking eye um, that I will then just set that on like that. <laughs> and you want the eye to be pretty like centered and balanced. Okay. So now I'm getting it up on my toothpick and I'm going to kind of glob it down from above. I'm going to do some on one and then some on the other. Beep. There we go. Just kind of letting it settle down and ooze to where it's going to go. But all the while trying to be careful to not let it just get wrecked. <laughs> And you can kind of squish and shift and smush it around some just to make sure that there's a good contact all the way around. And so now you can see here on the paper, let me check, make sure I'm in frame. Okay. Um, that it's starting to get really kind of goopy. Like, I could probably still place this last little bit, but it's not going to make as deep and good of a contact. And now, like, from the back side, I can really feel it starting to heat up. And it's just, like, right now would be the last seconds of being able to place it before you just have to stand back and leave it alone. And now it's... It's setting up now. Like, check it. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, so I'm going to fold this and put it in the trash. Yes. Ba, 
And also, while I am going to be using flat wire here in this one, um, in this video, you can do the same technique with round wire or square wire or twisted wire. Just, I mean, really whatever you have. <laughs> Yeah, you can feel the cabs are really quite warm to the touch. Just letting it set up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to set the fire eye off to the side because I'm not going to be working with it at all for during this video. You want it pretty well. And this isn't the only way that this... Um, cabochon is going to be attached to the wire. This is just stabilizing it for the wrapping. So what we're going to be doing here now, if you can see, the flat aluminum wire is coming out at a little bit of an angle and I'm going to follow that roughly 45 degree angle and just twist around because this is going to go around the uh, the wire. With this little tail that's coming off that's pokey, I'm going to come in and just trim that. No sense in having little pokey bits. But you, you are going to want it at a little bit of an angle though. I might actually be able to accomplish more of an angle. Which would be ideal. There we go. I'm going to snip off just a little bit more. Again, no reason to have any pokey bits. And what's great about this aluminum is you can come through with a file and kind of smooth it down. If you don't have a metal file like this, you can use an old emery board. Just, I mean, keep in mind it's going to wreck your emery board, so don't be like, oh no, it's ruined for my fingernails now. <laughs> So that's how it starts. How are you sitting? Okay, it's not sticking to, and it's done. It's a little tacky to the touch, but it'll be fine. You know, I say that, but I really shouldn't push it. You want it to re return to just cool temperature and to not be tacky to the touch anymore. Oh, gravy, this takes forever. And that's why I, I typically, whenever I'm making um, some eyes like this, I'll do them, or anything like this really, I'll do them in a big batch. That way by the time I finish the last one, the first one that I've started on is ready to work with. Because you have that same amount of downtime regardless. So now I'm going to be coming through and just kind of rounding at a sideways angle this um, flat aluminum wire. And that's kind of difficult to accomplish, um, especially without like mucking up your wire. But I'm going to thread this wire through that loop that we made and I'm going to bring it up as close as I can to the cabochon. And now I'm coming around the front and I'm going to bend around so this one exited on the top so I'm coming around and exiting on the top again and just following that little bit of a curve around like that and layering it across and this is exactly like the herringbone that I do um, on rings and bracelets and things in a couple of my other videos. And, then... and so you can see how having that glued helps so much. Now, I mean, it's still holding on here in the front, but that layer of epoxy just gives me the, the freedom to kind of feel confident that, yeah, I can do whatever I want on this. <laughs> Now also though, you can see, this will still tip and twist around. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. 
And you can see how that's kind of building up. And now we're going to do our last one. Maybe. Now this one, again, to hold it a little bit more securely, I'm just wrapping across the back. And from here, I'm going to snip, and I'm going to use my bent nose pliers to try to tuck this down just as much as a person can. So I'm going to have to snip a little bit more off, because I want it to tuck behind its own top layer. There we go. Any sharp bits, just file them down. That will the filing will remove the anodizing, but to me it's more important to have a nice smooth feel than it is to be like, oh no, there's a little bit of silver showing, and it's on the back side anyhow. Now to keep that spinning from happening, I mean having this bit go across the back does help. Which this is bulging out a little bit, so I am gonna get in here. And kind of twist it down and then just press. Ooh, it's so pretty. <laughs> um, you could do all sorts of different stuff, but I think I'm going to bend this top part around. Will that one reach? So if I bend that one around that way, this one around this way. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I almost wish for a gentler aluminum wire. Make something a little softer to work with. There's those ones. Where's my other ones one? What did you do? Oh, there they are. So I have it crossing across the back. And so I'm actually just going to uh, spiral this down as best I can. Well, that just broke square off. So there goes that idea. <laughs> so I guess what I'm going to do now then is um, just coil it into a spiral on the back. Wow, that not what I planned, but this is what's happening. Okay, so this wire coming across the back, that's going to be what I kind of tuck around. Does that make sense? There we go. Now, in the nature of epoxying things, you could attach this to a brooch pin. The contrast between the stiff and the soft aluminum on this is just mind-boggling. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to separate out these layers just a little bit. Because with working with it, it got smushed some. And so that's how it's sitting. And I think, you know, I really like the way it sits like this but it looks like a bale would attach more readily to the back side here. Um, we could come through and attach rings for a necklace. Oops, that's seriously durable.
Yeah, I really like the idea of this as a pin, though. Or a pendant. You could use a glue-on veil and just attach it right up there at the top. Yeah, let's see how it looks. I'm going to grab um, an 18 gauge, 1 fourth inch aluminum ring. Which, these are available for sale on my website. I coil and cut them myself. And then you can just open that up. And I'm going to go through this part here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? <clears throat> Since this is such a wide pendant and it would sit kind of askew, and again, you just kind of make it up as you go, really. Establish what your goals are you know, to have something hang from a necklace without falling off or hurting the person who's wearing it. Um, and then just go from there. <laughs> but I'd want the bail to be centered. So I'm going to have one more ring. So I'm going to open, attach these two rings because each one sits kind of offset from the center. But if you come through both of them, and suddenly it's sitting pretty centered. And then if you have the ring sitting like this, it's not going to lay evenly if you have it threaded through a, uh, a chain or something. So that's not really sitting perfectly centered either. Would just the one work okay? Experimentation is the spice of life, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I guess that sits pretty okay, just the one. Never underestimate your own potential for making something more complicated than it should be, Vaughn. <laughs> Then it goes and sits like that, and it doesn't look even. <laughs> well, maybe a different spot altogether would just be good. Okay, I found my closure. So here I've just looped through one of the flat pieces of aluminum <laughs> that I've wrapped it in. And I think that's going to work just perfectly fine. And considering that's the case, I can just do that from the other side. Yay. And there was much rejoicing. But of course, naturally, it won't work as well from this side just because. <laughs> oh no, I scratched it. Well, here, everybody, is a perfect opportunity of how to deal with, oh no, I've scratched it. And that is, quite frankly, to scratch it further. So here I'm coming through with my file and just adding, this is such a soft aluminum that I'm able to go through and just give it this like rough antique texturing. Because what's really interesting is if you do it all over, it looks like you did it on purpose. And it helps you give a little bit more control too over what weathering is happening where. This ends just a little too tight, so I am going to have to go back to the other side.
but this is such a softly anodized aluminum that I literally could come through and I think I might do this and etch runes onto it. So here I have, it's a bead reamer that has just been abused past what is reasonable. Um, and I'm going to come through and just scratch in. Oh, I can feel it in my teeth. Some different runes. <laughs> So you can take something that started as a mess up and just make it kind of cooler. A Dremel tip would probably be a little bit more effective, but I think this would be just fine. So it's pretty neat, <laughs> there's some runes written on it. There we go guys, a pretty cool rune embellished dragon eye. Okay, so it's not exactly as I planned, but this is what happened. And I'm pretty pleased, especially with the way that the kind of etched runes, like engraved runes kind of pop against the rest of it and the eyes there. It's so cool you guys. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you would like to share pictures of what you have made based off of this or any of my tutorials, or if you just want to be like, look it, I did a thing, um, you can share it to my wall on Facebook um, or Instagram. On both of them, I'm Back to Earth Creations. There's underscores where the spaces go for the Instagram, though, so I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, if you enjoy my tutorials but would like to support the creation of more of them and you've already liked, shared, and subscribed, you can become a patron on Patreon. There's a link down in the video description below where you can pledge a dollar a month to enter your name into our fairy house giveaway. At the time of recording, the fairy house is an incense burner with a little opening door and a chimney and stuff. Um, if you pledge one dollar, it puts your name in the hat once. If you pledge five dollars, it puts your name in the hat five times, which greatly increases your odds of winning. And if you pledge ten dollars or more, you get your choice of kits and materials or a gift mailed to you every month. And the more you pledge, the um, like the the more you get, you know, like the higher value your gift will be, or the more tools and materials you'll get. Because keep in mind, it costs like usually around five dollars to ship. Because I mean, it's packages of stuff. It's not like just a little envelope. So um, the more you pledge, the more you get. And I really appreciate that support because it goes towards not just the production of more videos here on YouTube, but it supports the artists and education efforts that I do at conventions where I go and provide the tools and materials for attendees to learn how to wire wrap and do chain mail in a hands-on environment. And then whenever they make, they get to keep. So when, every time y'all pledge, you're supporting little nerdlings everywhere getting better at their cosplays and possibly building life skills that they can make careers out of and stuff <laughs> so well I mean the odds of that happening but I mean don't uh, don't underestimate it Randy and I make a living at this and who'd have thought <laughs> so um thanks again you guys for all of your support and encouragement and just keep being awesome and I'll see y'all in my next video have an awesome day of all of you bye <laughs>